We thank you, Lord, and our God, for guiding us to tell us this evening. We know we owe to you, God, our total existence. For you have blessed us with life. You have blessed us with strength. You have blessed us with health. Food and drink you have given us. You fold clothes on us. You've not allowed us to be hopeless. Who have fought our life's battles for us, both on the spiritual and temporal. Father, there is no aspect of our lives that you have not taught and you are not still touching. And so we give you thanks and praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Father, we come asking for mercy and forgiveness. For only you forgive sins. And we are crying to you, Lord, in every way we sin against you. In thought, word, and deed, whether we remember them or not, Father, forgive us. Perish all the sins of our lives in your self forgetfulness. Don't let them come before your face again, O God. Let the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse us. Wash us thoroughly clean. So that this evening, as we gather up to you in fellowship, Father, and you look at us, don't see sin, Lord. Rather, see us thoroughly cleansed and wearing the white robe of the bride of Christ. Let that be a portion of God in Jesus' name. Amen. And we cry to you, my Lord and my God, that you, Father God, who have gathered us unto your spirit this evening, that your spirit will open our eyes of understanding, our hearts of understanding, that we will receive wisdom in how to handle your word as it is made plain to us, so that we'll be able to share it with others. So let your Holy Spirit teach us this evening, Lord. Help us to remain teachable so that what we are taught will be able to go teach others as well. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered this prayer. Bless be the Holy Amen. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us together. On the thought it was Jamila, so all of them. Brethren, this evening we want to handle we want to speak on a topic. titled The Seed Shall Not Be Heir with the Shock. The Seed Shall Not Be Heir with the Shock. So I know that the first thing everybody asks is, eh, we understand what seed is, which one is shock. The shock there is S-U-C-K. It's S U S H U C K. It is not S H O C K. So we are not going to let anybody shock. Yes. So this shock, all of us are familiar with me. When you go to that place yesterday, how did you buy it? Everybody knows maize. We all know that when you buy a piece of maize, it, it comes in a certain covering. 
usually green, yellow, or something like that. And then the base itself is on the inside. So that covering is what is called the shop. So this, what we are trying to talk today is that the seed, which is the grain there, that the seed is not, is not going to share anything without covering. So if they belong to a family, they cannot share an inheritance. The seed will be different, and the shock will be different. And what they get there for will also be different. So that's what this is. <coughs> the seed is not shock. Not shock. <laughs> well, we'll see. The seed shall not be air with the shock. It's hot. It's hot. And for the rest of you. Okay. Please put in five, please. Uh, okay, don't worry. So I'll touch you today. The seed shall not be air with the shock. And I'm trying to explain what shock is. That if you buy maize now. You know, it comes under a certain covering that's like this. It's usually green, it's a fluffy thing, and then this, the, the base proper is on the inside, which is this on the inside. So that covering on the outside is what is called the shock. I hope you understand that now. Okay. So that covering is the shock. And what you have here is that the seed shall not be air with the shock. So Abraham gave this message in 1965, in April. Yeah, the seed is inside, and the shock is the covering you see outside. Okay. You know, it's the covering. This thing like this, that is the shock. Find it, there's nothing in it. Okay. What what I'm being told here by a sister here, she went to market to buy corn. And uh, there was a, a somebody who bought us who said it. No, so there's a market woman there selling there is this. And so she had gone to the farm to buy corn. And you know it all comes in that thing. Yes, okay. Okay. So now she had come to her own market store to sell. So she wanted to remove all those things. So I told you want to buy and see the corn itself yes. and buy. Yes. What happened was that as the woman was tearing those things out, she yes. found that there was no corn inside. And you know, and I'm sure all of you have seen that kind of thing before. I have told you many times before that describes us and the Pentecostals. When you look at that thing, the 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 maze before you remove all those things, you know as you see it says, Oh, beautiful. This maze must be wonderful inside. You know, that outside has shown what is on the inside. So you embrace it. But by the time you open, you see there's nothing. That is Pentecostalism for you. 
So that's the constantism for you because they make, they make it, when you look at them, they are like they have the real truth. Whereas in fact, it is not so. So this is what this matter is all about. Now, but today, it is not about just that aspect. What we are talking about now is about air. You know what? You know, all of us know what inheritance is all about. And the title of this is saying that the shock cannot inherit with the seed. So all of us know now what is the seed. You see, that's the corn itself. And we know what is the shock. And that is that covering we see. So this is what I want you to understand before we, before before we go, you know. Okay. When Brabram was speaking about this um, this topic, he said when he came to that uh, the place where he was uh, preaching, because this was not this, this this was not in the tabernacle, you know. It was not it was not in the tabernacle. He was actually preaching in Los Angeles, California, in April 1965. That's when he was preaching. And he said something which I just want to bring to our notice. Not that it is part of this subject, but sometimes we want to talk about these things. He said that when he went there, they gave him one of the officials there walked up to him and gave him some checks. I'm sure you understand what I mean by check, check for money. Yes. And uh, I told him it was love offering from the people in that place. He went to preach somewhere, it's not in his church. His church is in Indiana, uh, Jefferson, but this one is in Los Angeles. That's quite some distance away. And the people then gave him a love offering. And he said, no, 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 you know that they should not have done that. So I didn't come here for that. Minister today, do you talk like that? You see, what our brother is saying here that when I said the ministers today do this kind of thing, he said, We are. Then they came to his place. They said they have come to do the different liberation, as they call it. Mm -hmm. And then they gave them bill of what they require before they, and I think it was over a hundred thousand. I ask you, we are in the Bible. Do you see this kind of rubbish? Where did they get these things that they are doing? So after you've collected money from people like that, then you want to pray and you expect God to hear that prayer. Never. You've liberated nothing. In fact, you have brought more demons into the family. And people continue to be deceived every day. Mm -hmm. You can convince yourself and you get any results you want to once, once you convince yourself. That's all. I mean, you see an ugly person look at himself in the mirror and say, So it doesn't matter at all. So it's not the shooting town. But he said, okay. However, he said, I did not come here for that purpose. 
But because we've chosen to do it, I thank you. I'm going to put it on my expenses because I'm going overseas. At that time, we came to the student, we had planned for an overseas trip. You'll soon know why I'm trying to bring this to you. I'm going overseas because I am not sponsored. Nobody is sponsoring that trip. I have no means of going there. I am going on my own. Church. This is a man that everybody was running after. Oh, they were sponsoring his trip to India, South Africa, everywhere. That was during the first and second pools. When he will go to these places, miracles. He will heal. He will raise the dead. All of these things. So they were begging, please. All these businessmen fellowship, all of them. The this is 1965, April. Abraham died December 65, that same year. By that time, he had moved into the third pool. And the third pool, the matter was the word. Now begin to give the word putting everything as it should be, as God wants us to understand him and his word. Bam, everybody ran away. That's why here now, on that day, he was talking about his government without anybody sponsoring him. When I was talking to you about that too, I said, Brown used to receive thousands upon thousands of letters while he was doing first pool, second pool, attraction. But as soon as he went into the third pool, which was giving them the work, the thousands of four thousands reduced to a few hundred. Nobody was coming to see him again. Nobody was requesting, would you stop at our station and preach? Nobody. They did not want to hear the work, but they want to get the healing. They want to get the raising of death. They want to get all sorts of things. As far as they are concerned, that's their purpose of coming to church. Is it different today? Are people not going to church only because they want to see signs and wonders? Even GTBF. So don't start looking at somewhere, somebody else. You want to see only signs and wonders. The world does it mean anything to you? I put something on our platform yesterday or two days ago, I can't remember, about the Pope gathering people from all the religions, Islam, Hindu, Buddhist, all of them gathered together. I put it on our platform, give to their platform. And I put my notes on that. I said, you see, the end is here. This is what we know is going to happen. This is the staring of the one world religion. Because there's going to be one world religion led by the Pope. And these the things we are preaching against. That's what made God to destroy the town of Eden. Only one or two persons in GTDN ever made a comment on that thing. But if I had put something about something that happened somewhere and there was uh, uh, something fantastic, uh, uh, miraculous, so you, know, you have people making comments. What are you looking for in church? At this stage where we are now, we are rapture, whether you want to believe it or not, it does not matter. Read your Bible. 
Listen to what we have said to you concerning Bram's message about the end time. If you are really listening to it, something will be in your heart to say, this thing can end any moment now. And if that's in your heart, what should be open in your heart is not miracles. It's not signs and wonders. It's God, let me be among the bright. Because if you miss the bride, you will remember that someone preached to you not to miss the bride because you will know what pain is. That's what should be uppermost in your mind now. And stop thinking about signs and wonders. Is it wrong to have signs and wonders? Absolutely not. It's okay. But they don't take precedence over the world. We are in church today, not for signs and wonders. We are in church today to get what will prepare us so that we can go in the rapture. And that is the word of God. Signs, wonders will not prepare you for, for, for heaven. It's only about this place. You come here with nothing. And Paul said, it is certain that you will live here with nothing. So your sons and one that you go pass, you go pass heaven. So let's try and understand these things. So look at what happened to Brown. Is that this mission I'm going from? We were telling them before he started preaching. Thank you for the love of I didn't want, I didn't come here for it. I don't really want it, but okay. It comes at, it has come at a good time because I'm traveling overseas and there's nobody sponsoring me. I'm going on my own. So it's a kind of a secret mission. The churches there won't let me in. Can you hear? The churches in the overseas place you go to, they won't even let him in. Because they don't want him. He's preaching the word. He's preaching word now. It's no longer the well, signs and wonders that they are after. He said, I'm actually going as a hunter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't want me. Instead of staying at home, he still decided to go and then say, applying as his coming of tourism for hunting and using his own money. Watch them on television today. What are they doing? Barra. Sophisticated barra. That barra who all this money a lot. All this food for money. That's all. When they preach to you for 20 minutes, the next thing. They spend the next 10 15 minutes saying, Remember, I need money for this and all that and all that. Yeah, I am here too much in our church. You know? And then you have five offerings. Oh, God. The brother here said in this in this church in the east that they make five offerings when they come to church. Every first Sunday of the month, that's how you find Naira Sunday. <laughs> I want to learn you all today. Naira Sunday. And then as a welcome, my father day. Like this and that. So say that that uh, the first Sunday they tell them it is Naira Sunday. Inside church. How can you talk like that? You know, how can you do this in the answer? Just watch them on television. They are beggars. Oh, you know, I'm going to go to so and so place, please give me one. Did God send you? All because they want branches. All because they want size. They want many people to hear about them. And so they will do contrary to the word of God. There is no bazaar. Forget it. Bazaar is just a scheme to make money. <coughs> There's nothing like bazaar in the Bible. So, <laughs> it's a simple truth you are 
They are lying. So he said it's a kind of secret because the churches won't let me in and I'm going as a hunter because I know, I know the Lord has put it in my heart to do so. And I have to go in under disguise. Can you imagine? Under disguise just to work for God. So they have a little funny idea over there. Each one wants me to sign a card. You want me to sign condition for what was to, to come, if you want to come, if you want to bring it, and you have to sign. You have, you have to sign that you agree that I will agree with them in what they believe. Can you imagine? You want to come, you are ready to sponsor you, but you must sign that you agree to what we believe. Exactly. And then you say this group is wrong, then we choose you to say another church is wrong. You know? And then this, the other group too, we come to say to him, we can bring you in, but when you come, we want you to say that this other group is wrong. Oh. <laughs> then he added, I don't like that. I don't like that. I've always tried to stand between the people outside of the organizations and their differences. I don't want to be involved with all of these things. That is why I say that we are not a denomination. We are not even here, we are not a denomination. We don't belong to any denomination. I don't have any of that here, I am the shepherd of this assembly. I don't report to anybody on the face of this earth. And in this message, everywhere you are, you are on your own. You study the message of God through William Abraham and your own. When Abraham was alive, he was not the ogre of any church. He had only one church. Yet his message is going around the world, yet himself has only one church. Paul, for those of you who study the Bible, you know he wrote over one third of the New Testament, going to so many places, Colossia, Rome, Thessalonica, yet he had only one church. There was no branch, but he will go to a place, he will establish church there, talk to the people there, they seem to know, he leaves them, they are in charge of their people, he moves away. If they need him to want to make something clear, they will tell him, if he has time, he will come, if he doesn't have time, he will send somebody, otherwise he will write to them. But that he is their God, he will not be giving them order. Never. Because Jesus Christ is against branch. And any church that has a branch is already cancelled by Jesus Christ. Now you think about all the churches you know. Are all of them not talking about branches? Yeah, talking about Now when we tell them that Jesus Christ doesn't know, they will get angry. They say, who are you? How many are you that your nonsense got to the last person? 10, 12, 15 persons. Do you know how many we have? Even my Buddha branch is 200,000. And you come and want to talk to us. You must be defeated. Don't size impress God. 
size does not impress God. They have told you, many are God, you are told. The God will take the narrow way. The God will many enter to destruction. Narrow way, few find it. And few are still enter. And people are still talking about size. Don't you see the foolishness? The devil has taken the heart of man. He cannot think right again. So, Bob says, we are not a denomination. We are children of a family. We are children of a family. And that's the message family. That's who we are, children of a family. Then he gave an example of himself, Abraham. He said, but there's no brand denomination. <laughs> he said, there's no brand denomination. There is a Branham family. Yes. There's a family of people who are Branham. There's a family of people who are Muchewa. There's a family of people who are Kadiri. And things like that. And you do not join the Brown family. You do not join the Amitabha family. You do not join the Kadiri family. How do you get in there? You are born into it. So you can't join. You don't have a message that you, you have to be born into the church of Jesus Christ. All this talk of joining church, joining church is absolute rubbish. Let us always remember that. And God will teach us in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's get to our business now. Open to Galatians chapter 4. Remember the title is The seed shall not be heir with the shock. And I've explained to you what shock is. When you take corn, that covering of the corn, and the corn is inside of it, that covering is what's called the shock. Let's look at Galatians chapter 4. You want to read from verses from verse 27 to verse 31. Galatians chapter 4. We want to read 27 to 31. Are we all there? Okay, Father, we thank you for your word. Bless us as we read in the mighty name of Jesus. Excuse me. Galatians 4, 27 to 31. Ready? Read. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not. Break forth and cry thou that travelest not. For the desolate had much more children than she which had an husband. Now, we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as that who was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what said the scripture? Cast out the bond woman and her son. For the son of the man shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of but of the free. And we thank you, Lord, because you have been answered. You have blessed us. May you teach us your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And so, brethren, Paul, in what we read now, was actually talking about the, the literal seed of Abraham's two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. Ishmael was of the bond woman. Isaac was of the free woman. And I'm sure I don't need to tell you how the two of them came to be, right? 
Well, have you heard about Ishmael? Have you heard about Isaac? Okay. Have you heard about Abraham? Okay. You know that Abraham was in a certain place and God told him, Come, I want to take you, I want to bring a promised land. All right. Abraham was, was married to a woman called Sarah. I'm saying this because of a brother who we have to bring up for those of you on the platform. So, Abraham married Sarah. Abraham was 75 years old. And they didn't have a child. And God promised them a child. Then they were 75 years old when they left their own country and followed to follow what God said and take you, take you to a place called the promised land, which is the place you call Israel to be. So they got there year after year, no child. Remember, 75 years old now. The woman that's 65 that time. So, after waiting for so many years, the woman said to the husband, he said, you know, God promised you I do. He said, yes. He said, but see now, how long you stay there? No child yet. How long? The man said, God promised that. I'm going to still talking about promise. <laughs> Time don't they go, time don't they go. Now this woman, Sarah, she had a housemate, an Egyptian girl called Hagar. And he said to Abraham, take my housemate. Use her. Let her give you a child. And then I will take the child. Me now, I cannot give birth again. At my age, there's no way I can give birth. So I said, so Ozani, it is something that's not happening. So there's no way I can give birth again. So take my husband. She's young. She can give you the child. Well, Father Abraham. So, all right. Now you say so. Since she said so, <laughs> no problem. Let it be done not to me according to your word. <laughs> so Abraham took the woman, the husband, and she became pregnant. And she gave birth to Ishmael. Remember, Sarah, her madam, had said, and she will give birth to the child, and I will not take the child. Well, for me, when the woman don't want to finish, you say, who is it? You are just another woman like me, you are my own wife. And the child is my own. So I said, child. Eh? So, Abraham said, well, you said I should try. I have tried. I have not found out. To get out of it, maybe break out of it. I don't know. So, but God's promise did it change? Because Abraham didn't have a child. But the woman came and said, It doesn't matter. We can do it this way. God Did God kill Ishmael? So did God accept Ishmael or not? He did. Let nobody deceive you about that. Because otherwise you are killed. 
But he said his promise will still come to pass. And true enough, at age 100, 